And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Howdy everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Electioneer. Now, this is a game that takes place in China, and you are going around to the different districts and basically trying to get people to vote for you. You want to get the most votes so that you can win. But you do so, as with all voting, in a fairly complicated way. In this game, you're going to be moving a pawn around to different cities, paying, or different districts within the city, sorry, paying money to try to campaign there and get their votes, and then collecting cards and putting these cards in front of you. This would be a very difficult game for me to kind of give a real quick description of because there's a lot going on in it. Even though, again, the concept is about getting votes, but I think the game mechanisms don't necessarily reflect that. I, I don't know. Here, let's just let's just look at how it plays. There's a lot going on in this game, so I'm going to just kind of give you a basic overview. You're trying to get the most votes in this game, or to get a certain number of votes, and you will win. And many times, votes will come from accomplishing various goals in the game. Like this says, having the most blue cards from the blue section over here. Uh, but players also at the beginning of the game will be drawing a strategy card, and it will show many different locations on the board. It shows you where these locations are. And if you control a certain number of these territories, then you have that many votes, although you have negative votes if you don't have a lot of these territories. And so you're trying to do that. At the beginning of the game, players will be given two starting territories. You'll pick one, and that's where you're going to start on the board. And also, you're going to get 10 money minus however much the cost is. You can see the cost is there. These have different symbols on them. Controlling the most of particular symbols is also a way to get votes in this game. When you get these cards, you'll notice there are five different colors, although each color, you'll notice there's shades of color amongst that. That's, I think, just so you can tell where they are on the board. But you're only ever going to have five piles in front of you, and each of them will give you a special ability. Um, so this one here says, when strategy exploration, I can look through two more cards and choose one more as a private strategy. That's a permanent ability I have in play. That probably makes no sense to you, but if I get another purple card, I put it on top, and that's my new strategy, although I still get all the symbols that I had from the previous cards. And so I can have five cards active at any given point in time. On a player's turn, they have two actions that they can take. One of those actions is just moving. You can move one to three spaces. So I can just go one, two, three. Now, that's going to be kind of slow moving, and I might want to take subways. And you'll notice there's different subway lines around the board, like you'll see down here is the green subway. So I can move along the green subway line or up here on the orange one. Sometimes a card will give you the freedom to move on subways, but also you can always use a card that you have in your hand, discard it as a ticket to move on different subways. And for each stop that you move on that subway, you pay one resource disc. You can also use both of your actions to use the ferry. That's these gray lines. And I would just move from one a gray line to the next city that's available on that ferry and so they move all around the board and that's another way to move and it's actually the only way to get to some of the spots on the board. Obviously players are going to want more cards so when you want a card you're going to place your token next to the row that you want the card and then you'll put money on a another row. That's kind of how it does. You also put money in the treasury. You can also if you want to place your token in the treasury. Then as another action, you can pull your token off. If you are in the treasury, you get the, the tokens that are in that treasury. If you're on a spot here, you get the money that's there, and you get either one card or both cards, depending if somebody else is there or not. And that's how you get more cards. If your pawn is on the board in a spot, and you let's say my pawn is here, 
and I happen to have the card that matches that spot, then bam, I can place that card into play, giving me access to its special abilities. Sometimes they let you do something in a one-time effect. Sometimes there's cards that you can tap once per turn to do something. So placing these pawns, pulling them back, getting the cards and money is a major focus of the game. When you do play a card, you also have to pay the costs of it here. Finally, the last action you can take is you can play these strategy cards to get the votes on them and or a special ability in the top. And you can also draw more of them to get into your hand so that you can play them. So that's essentially, oh, and also you have an, you have an action where you can just take two more discs from the supply money-wise. But that's what you're going to keep doing until you get the amount of votes that you will need to win the game, which is based on the number of players. Whoever does that is the winner. So the board is a hodgepodge of colors, and I love color, but I have a lot of problems with this board, and this is my biggest problem with the game, frankly, is that it is a mess to see. So I have a big stack of blue cards, and like I said, they're various colors. They show you where, sort of, that city is, but finding that city... Uh, even though there's a symbol that, that all these symbols are in the board, and there's a name and a color, you would think that would help. It doesn't. Consistently, I was looking at this. I even played this game with somebody who knew this map, you know, who's been to this spot here, and even they had a hard time remembering where anything is. There are so many locations on here. Every location is different. There's so much symbology. Sometimes it's easy, like some cards. Oh, this one just gives me three business symbols, but only if it's a top one. And this one here, an extra action quote, I get an extra action I can take per turn, but they're really small printing. And you there's just so much going on in this game, and it's really difficult. And then you talk about these cards. It's like, all right, if you have a certain number of these cities, and I'm just check, 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 looky, looky, looky. It's just so much work. This game is so exhausting to play because you are constantly looking at the board trying to figure out where everything is. It's pretty, it's nice, it certainly grabs my attention, but between this, all the symbology on these, that it's easy to miss when you get one and you need to grab it, it's too much really. It almost makes the game unplayable. As I said there, the biggest problem with this game is the components. Here on the back of the rule book, they have a list of all the stops on each subway so that you know where that subway goes to. Sounds helpful, except I'm constantly going, okay, I think the subway goes there, is that correct? Um, does this match this? This game, frankly, I have to give this a, a, a not approved just on basis of it being so much work. I Let's say, and I don't even think it's a cultural thing, I think if you pulled this out and put this in Miami, for example, uh, and had the same style going on, I would say, oh, this is Coral Gables, and this is Homestead, and that's where on the map. I, I have an idea of where it is, but I might not know exactly. And then all this symbology and where the stuff stops, I, would, I think that's just very problematic. It really slows the game down. So that's my biggest problem with the game. There's a few other things. The whole mechanism of placing a token on the cards, putting money somewhere else, which is a really wonky mechanism, and then pulling it back to get the cards just feels clunky. It just feels like an extra step for no reason. Why not just draw a card? The game would be faster. The game would be smoother. It just feels like there's this whole, I'm going to put this in the treasury. And then someone else will be like, well, I'm going to do something that takes money out of the treasury. Ha, 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 ha. And now you don't get it. And it, it, it feels, this whole placing things and then pulling them just feels like a clunky system that if I was a developer, I would have said, you need to cut that out of the game. So that is clunky. You're then spending forever looking up where your roots are and getting things. And every time I played this, somebody said, oh, you know what? I, I, I should have taken this like four turns ago. It just It's this constant for, for getting, oh, I have the most blues. That you remember, but the most symbols, you're constantly watching. And every turn, at the end of your turn, you need to evaluate what you have in front of you compared to everybody else. And that just gets tedious. I think that's the word for the game is tedious. Then there's a few cards that are take that which has no 
come on, if I work for a long time and spend a lot of turns, I mean, when you have to take both your actions for a ferry and that's your whole turn, that's very boring. So I, I went down, ferry, ferry, got to the one spot, got the money, put the token out, took, you know, had the card, played the card, hooray, then someone did something to take that away from me. Are you kidding me? That's not fun. So at the conclusion of, of my thinking about this, electioneer, cool idea, looks really neat, has this funky, interesting, colorful vibe. But the functionality goes against it. The length of the game, I think, is entirely too long for what it is. And it just feels like an underdeveloped game. It feels like a neat idea. There's a lot of cool aspects here. You have 10 different actions you can do on your turn, and you get to do two of them. But they're not fast. They're not smooth. Many of the actions are pretty boring. Using a card as a ticket feels wasteful because of how much work it takes to get those cards. The take that feels overly mean and problematic. The concept of moving around and collecting stuff in a huge map, that's interesting. And I, again, I feel like there's the germ of some fun things here. I just, at, I don't want a game when I'm done with it to go, wow, that was some work. That's not what games are for. They are there to be fun. And I'm not sure this one succeeds in that. That's Electioneer. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll talk to you next time. Dice Tower Judgment, pretty, but I'll pass.